Welcome, everyone. Good morning. Um, so, this panel is how vertical approaches are refining local marketing. Um, and on the panel, so my name's Dylan. Uh, my background is X eBay, worked in classifieds and marketplaces, used to work at Microsoft. Um, and so I've been helping small businesses and publishers for a few years. Now, now I do consulting. We're really excited about this panel. On my panel, I have Bob Barnes, who's, Bob Barnes, who's come from Freshline. Um, to replace the um, Jay, who's the CEO, who couldn't make it. We have Russ Cohn from Time Out. And then we have Xavier, and I'm going to butcher your last name. Uh, Zaytun. Zaytun from Zen Chef, and they're um, focused on the restaurant vertical. Um, so I'm going to have them each introduce themselves briefly and talk about their company, and then we'll jump into some questions that I have, and then we'll have Q&A at the end. Bob, you want to start? Hi, I'm, I'm Bob Barnes uh, with Fresh Lime. We're a US-based company that uh, focuses on solving churn for both small businesses and the publishers that sell digital marketing solutions to those small businesses. Um, for the uh, publishers, we do that through offline attribution of value. So we help the publisher prove their value to the small business. Uh, all the way down to revenue dollars generated from the ads that the publisher is, is providing. Uh, and for the small business, we do that through retention marketing to get the small business uh, customer to return time and time again and become a loyal customer uh, rather than continually, uh, continually uh, driving new customers through, uh, through ad sales. Russ? Uh, good morning. I'm, is this on? Can you hear me? Uh, so I'm Ross Khan. I am responsible for uh, e-commerce and local advertising on a global level for Time Out. Uh, if you don't know Time Out, we are the world's um, trusted platform for inspiring and enabling people to go out in cities around the world. Uh, Time Out is uh, going through an interesting journey right now. We are moving from uh, obviously what's a, le a legacy print publication uh, to becoming more of an e-commerce player. So we've recently. Uh, re-released and refreshed our brand uh, and our new uh, mission is to discover book and share. So the key for us is to enable commerce through content uh, and people come to us constantly uh, for engaging content and inspiration about what to do in cities. So uh, what my task is with my teams is to ensure that people have as easy a journey as possible to go from engaging with that content through to buying what they need to enable them to go out. So uh, we're going through that transformation now. Uh, it's an exciting journey, and we have a lot of different verticals that we work with uh, to enable them to do that. Uh, our premium profiles business, for example, is um, uh, a business that I've just launched in New York recently. Uh, it's a business that sells and helps uh, restaurants and bars in cities today to get in front of users when they're coming to Time Out looking for that inspiring content and for inspiration to go out in the city. Uh, and that's growing pretty rapidly. We're in London, Paris, and New York now. Uh, and so that's a great model to help small businesses to get in front of an audience uh, of, of over 110 million people that we have globally uh, across our properties. Xavier, you want to tell us a bit? Hi. Zen Chef? Uh, yeah. So I'm Xavier. I'm the founder and CEO of Zen Chef. We are a Paris-based startup uh, that helps restaurants with their uh, digital marketing and reservations management. We currently operate in five European countries. Um, the company is five year old, so now we are helping more than 3,000 restaurants in Europe, uh, managing all their digital presence from website creation to reservation management, uh, email marketing, social media management, reviews, monitoring, so that's a really f uh, all in one marketing solution for independent restaurants that helps them uh, remain independent in their digital marketing, uh, so that means not uh, putting all their eggs in the same basket by just being on the reservation platforms, but by having the same tools that these platforms have for their marketing and to use them to acquire customers uh, directly uh, by not paying commissions for all new customers. Um, so that's it. We raised around 8 million euros in the last uh, three years. Thanks for that. So I thought the first question or I put to the panel is, um, it's kind of the, the chicken and egg. The big question is, are we really moving to um, vertical approaches? Is there still a place for horizontal in the local space? 
Um, and then what are the different needs that businesses need based on their category? So let's start with that and maybe start with Bob. Sure. Um, obviously, uh, you know, horizontal works really well in certain product categories, uh, presence um, in cases. Uh, horizontal can work well for larger businesses that have a local presence. Uh, it becomes much harder when you get to the vast majority of businesses uh, who are small and have, uh, you know, a local presence of maybe even one store or one location. Um, and that becomes very challenging. So I think it's an interesting subject to consider on the panel. And, and Russ, your time out, which is a classic, comes from, it's been around for a few years. Um, you're, you're sort of a broad vertical, if I might add. So, I mean, how do you tailor the different offerings and how are you focusing to, you know, not just sell ads, but other um, types of products to your verticals that you serve? Sure. Um, I mean, I've spent probably a dozen years across local, uh, and what I've realised is that is that each market is different. And the reason is you can't local isn't you know can't be a broad sweeping brush, a broad context over things. So you have to acknowledge the things within the verticals and with the partners you're working with, and where they are in the progress of uh, digitisation and what what appeals to them. Uh, for us, our content is broad, and so it enables people to come in on various touch points and horizontally from Google. Obviously, we're very reliant on Google still. Uh, everyone's trying to move away from that, but uh, people come in on different uh, touch points of content. So what we do is we, uh, on an e-commerce side, we're trying to focus on where, obviously, the best opportunity is for us to have the impact while staying true to what is important to Time Out, which is engaging uh, and inspiring content. So for us, as long as we continue to write great content, uh, and then build the tools that enable people to do the things they want to do, then we can help them do that. So the restaurant space, for example, is you know the, the most important. The food and drink space for us is the most important because it's about a quarter of our uh, traffic globally uh, comes to us for food and drink. Uh, and so we'll build tools and content, and now we're enabling that e-commerce part, whether it be reservations uh, or uh, being able to engage with that content that go that they're going to market. We're also looking at a lot of new, exciting um, activation-based uh, things. We think that activation and experiences will be uh, very important to people. So people don't just want to go online and buy stuff. They want to go out and, and have an event and taste food with a, you know, in a special uh, location. So with the, with the power and the assets that, that Time Out has, I mean, we have a market in uh, Portugal called the Mercado de la Beira uh, in Lisbon, which is now, I think, the number one or two uh, time out, uh, destination on TripAdvisor. Uh, and it's, an, it's a live market of the best of food and drink in Lisbon and some shops, and it's enabling people to experience the, the Time Out brand in a live context. And so for that, it's, it's enabling the brand to be activated in a live context, and I think there's a, big, uh, there's a big trend towards going to do that amongst audiences where they want to they go out and experience stuff. So we think we're in a good position to do that. It's that online, offline. I'll, I've got another question on that I'll yeah. come back to. But in terms of restaurants, um, do you have your own booking platform, or do you work with partners? No, I mean, uh, we work with partners. We'd, we'd, uh, we need to. The market is dominated by a few partners who do restaurant reservations. The key to, to that is uh, they have the scale and coverage of restaurants, so you have to work with them. Um, I, I know what it's like when you know, big incumbents uh, own the territory and you're forced to work with them. Small, business do, small businesses don't always want to do that. We'd love to build our own booking platform in time uh, to enable that. ROI and frictionless um, opportunity for small businesses to track through timeout. We're not quite there yet, but when we get the resource, we will be trying to build better tools for small businesses. From Joe's point on the, on the Facebook piece, um, the, the ROI is a difficult thing, but if you have a close relationship with a vendor like Timeout, who, uh, who's, who's putting you in front of great audiences and providing return on investment, then I think small businesses will want to work with us uh, even more so, because they need that attention. Uh, and you know we don't have the scale problem. We have the scale problem globally, but in in city we can give attention and work with small businesses and give them impact and return on investment. So that's my focus. Okay, thanks. But speaking of restaurants, so Xavier, you're very focused, or 100% focused on the restaurant vertical. Um, and so tell us a little bit about what what are the specific needs, marketing and beyond that you provide to restaurants that makes that um, such a interesting vertical, but also potentially one that needs to be serviced um, by a point, you know, one, one type of um, service provider versus a broad horizontal provider. 
Yes, uh, first, maybe because, uh, before to uh, explain uh, what restaurant needs, uh, I think that verticalization of digital uh, marketing for local businesses is really a consequence of the level of maturity of the businesses. So that means that not all the local businesses need some very verticalized services. Um, restaurants is really the case because as you said, that's the first category uh, in search and um, in local businesses. So they really, really need uh, specific services, uh, but if you look at uh, digital marketing for local businesses a few years ago, it was limited to website creation, so there was no need for uh, dedicated services for each category. Uh, on our uh, um, product, the two main features uh, that are used by restaurants are the reservation management tool and operations optimization, because it's not only accepting reservation on their own website, but that's also optimizing uh, their floor um, floor plan management and uh, their occupation rate. So uh, the idea is really to use reservation as the center uh, of all other services that they can use. So for example, uh, based on the occupation rate of a restaurant, uh, like it's 6 p.m. and they only have 50% occupation rate for tonight, they can uh, launch a Facebook uh, campaign or send an email marketing campaign. So the idea is really to have this all-in-one solution with different features that communicating together uh, and benefit from the key data that is the uh, occupation rate of the, the restaurant. Okay, so restaurants, I mean, you can definitely see you've got your reservation, your booking, um, and then filling up the, the space. Um, so for other verticals, um, so what are the, the tools or the solutions that other verticals need beyond just visibility um, and booking even? Bob? Yeah, I'll take that. I, I think that everybody's focused on the top of the funnel, uh, driving new leads, new customers. Um, how do we fill the schedule? How do we fill the tables at the restaurants? Um, and that focus has largely been on new customers. And I think that's mostly because that's what we understand. And, and ad, ad sales and marketing is all around uh, bringing new customers in the, in the door. Uh, but you know, traditionally, you know, in, the, in the old days, uh, small business was about repeat, repeat customers. It was about building a relationship with, uh, between the merchant and the consumer. Um, and uh, it was going to the local deli or it was going to the local bakery um, and having a, a tradesman who handles uh, repairs. Uh, and that's largely been lost as a function of, you know, kind of the decline of Yellow Pages and, um, and the advancement of search. And so now oh, users tend to perform a new search every time they need a, a provider. And, uh, and so there's been people that have developed marketplaces around uh, matching the, you know, the user who's searching and the uh, consumer or the uh, merchant who's providing a service, um, which we think is, is detrimental to, to the small business. Um, <clears throat> so rather than focusing on the top of the funnel, which is great uh, for growth of a business, uh, you know, we focus on the, what happens after the first service or after the first uh, exchange between the merchant and the consumer. And so retention marketing, getting that customer to come back over and over and over, building loyalty um, and a relationship. So engagement uh, post-transaction becomes hugely valuable. And when it comes to retention for uh, a, a publisher or anybody selling digital marketing solutions to local businesses, um, you know, you're only getting credit today for the first interaction. But what about the, the job that happened, you know, if you had a small painting job you know, and, and you know, what happens on the second painting job that may be a large painting job, right? How many times did that customer come back to that same restaurant? How many times did, um, did the, the customer have their carpets cleaned? Um, so we capture that transaction data and attribute value back to the person who drove the original ad. Uh, and so that becomes super valuable when it comes to retention and, and uh, keeping, your, keeping your customers as a, um, as a publisher. Um, and for the small business, uh, that becomes super valuable because uh, you know, they tend to spend a lot of money on advertising solutions and they're confused and frustrated. They don't know what works. The publishers have a very hard time explaining to them what works because, let's face it, the publisher doesn't know what works uh, in, in most cases. And so uh, you know, it's interesting to see um, you know, Facebook talking about 
um, you know, offline conversion. And, uh, and that's, a tough, that's a tough thing, uh, but that's what we focus on. And, uh, and getting those customers back becomes very, very lucrative for not just the small business, but also for the publisher who drove the original um, customer. Thanks for that. So, Russ, you're a publisher, and you work across different verticals. So what other types of solutions are you providing beyond just advertising and booking? Uh, so, uh, naturally, we have different solutions, again, uh, for our different verticals. Um, the stuff that we focus on, so on the, when I put my e-commerce hat on, naturally, we have to sell stuff, right? So, um, and that's an easy kind of attribution point, because you can see the customers you drove the spend versus the sale. Uh, so it's easy to do that. But um, it, it's funny because in different verticals, people do want different things. And not everybody wants a full ROI attribution or return on investment uh, for their spend. They just want to be seen sometimes. And a presence is actually important. So you can't dismiss brand. I mean, brands spend a lot of money on branding for that very reason. And so as a publisher, we have the ability to get people in front of an audience. Not everything we do is ROI focused. Um, so, But we do want to have more transparency and simplicity to particularly the small businesses we work with. And I think that's key because in a world of complex digital platforms, um, it's very confusing. They're often you know, single business owners, they don't have the time. Uh, so we're trying to create tools within our uh, advertising products that are simple to see, simple to measure, and we uh, are putting a lot of account management as well against our advertisers to try and support them. Um, in the entertainment space and other spaces, unfortunately, uh, it, a lot of that data is held by the big players, so when you want to partner. So what I, what I learned at my time at Google is when I was working with publishers and what you know, big newspapers were trying to become technology companies. And they spent hundreds of millions of pounds trying to be a tech company when they were really a publisher. And they've forgotten what they were. And I think what we're trying to do is hold true to w what is key to time out is the content. Um, so we partner, we have to partner with businesses. But the ecosystem doesn't always allow you to have your fair share of that, and I think there needs to be more cooperation with partners to uh, to look at us as enablers for their product, for their brand, uh, and not try to own everything about the customer. I think if we do more of that as an ecosystem, then uh, we'll probably see more frictionless transactions and better uh, return on investment. But you know, it's hard to get away that quick when you've got a big market. So you mentioned account management. So there's a question we, we spoke about this before, Xavier. Um, how do you onboard your customers? And not, I mean, so. As we know, small businesses, some of them are pretty digital savvy. A lot are still pretty new to it. So is it a self-service solution? Do you find you're you know, calling people? Are you going around and seeing these restaurant owners? How do you support them? Yeah, usually we used to say that uh, onboarding and all the um, the, yeah, all the, the people who help our new customers uh, manage the, the product and get the, the most benefit uh, using it is part of the product because without it, uh, we wouldn't have, I think, this satisfaction level today because we keep 99% of our customers every year. So most pe many people say that there is a very high churn uh, in uh, uh, digital marketing solutions for uh, uh, restaurants and local businesses in general. It's not our. It's not uh, the case for 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 us. Um, so that's really really important. Uh, so the ser the first thirty days when we uh, sign with a new restaurant, we really make sure that uh, they know how to use our platform. Uh, we uh, try to track uh, what they do, and we have some milestones that we need to make sure they pass uh, during these first thirty days. And so. I think now, with the level of maturity of most restaurant uh, managers of our owners, uh, this is not something we uh, could uh, we could not do in our process. And self-service is not possible for for, for now. Uh, it's really important that to, to have people uh, involved in this process. So, before we open up to the floor, I mean, there's a question to the other panelists. So, self-service versus account management. How do how do you interact with your SMBs? I'd, I'd like both personally. I think because timeout's going through uh, transition, we don't necessarily have the resource to devote to building self service for now. Self service is fine for some people, but not for others. Um, and again, you know, it's good to have it there, but I think people really want that, uh, that personal touch in terms of working with people. Now, you could say, well, if we, were, if we had 100,000 advertisers, how would we do that? Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a different challenge when you're at that scale. But for the business of our size, we think that's important that uh, we can help guide people through that process, we can support them, 
um, and that's important. I would like to build self-service to get some sort of scale in time, but then our product needs to iterate to allow for customers to do that. So I think it's just dependent on the business that you have, and you understand your customer. And if you understand your customer, then you'll build the right products for them. Self-service isn't a panacea to solve your scale problems. It's just another channel to, to win customers. Yeah, that's a great question. I think that, uh, you know, we've built, this is our third, our third business in the small business space. Uh, we've aggregated over those other prior businesses well over 100,000 direct relationships with SMBs um, and uh, processed, you know, well over a billion dollars worth of, um, worth of uh, ad sales uh, with those SMBs. And that's a lot of customer management. And uh, we've tried just about everything, um, and most of it didn't work. <laughs> um, and so, you know, and it's kind of the, this age-old debate. Every, every show is, is this, this, this subject comes up of, you know, how do you manage these customers? And, and I, think, um, I think Ross is right. I think that uh, it really depends on the customer, and it depends on the category, and it depends on um, the product offering. Um, in our case, uh, what we've done is try to remove as much uh, heavy lifting by the customer as possible. So they basically do very little. Uh, we do uh, kind of an onboarding interview. It's about a 10-minute process. Um, we connect to their data sources um, through you know, a couple of clicks. Um, and we do most of the heavy lifting for them. Uh, and so then uh, we start acting as more of a consultant to the business. And uh, we, you know, we have a call with them once a month and review their goals, uh, make sure that we're uh, aligned with those. And more, most of that is really just, hey, here's what a great job we've done for you. Um, and we find that if we can communicate uh, what a great job we've done, then we don't lose customers. Uh, and so uh, in terms of managing, managing our customer, uh, we don't. We don't. We don't really have any self-service. Uh, we push all the content out to them uh, in terms of reporting. We deliver it to them um, in bite-sized pieces that they can digest. Uh, we don't overwhelm them. We don't give them a dashboard. We don't give them a big um, account management login. Um, we keep it very, very simple, and we provide them the information they need when they need it, and that's all. Sorry, I just want to add one layer to that. Um, so what I'm, I'm trying to do more is, is it's, it's also about uh, sales and acquisition strategy. So be clear about the customers you want to have in your business. So obviously when you're starting up, you're happy to take on anything because you want your business to grow. But I think you really shouldn't dismiss thinking about which customers work for you and which don't because we spend a lot of our time managing bad customers and not every customer is right for every business. So I think it's important that you, you think about that, you think about your strategy, who you want to acquire, and then aim not only your sales teams to be thinking about longer term customers and not just bringing in new business, uh, but what is the kind of customer you want to work with in the team to support your growth, because that will enable better relationships with customers and ultimately your business should be more successful because you don't spend time managing uh, bad customers. Okay, can we open up to the floor for some questions? Hi, uh, Zifan Camillo. Uh, the panel is, is kind of putting horizontal versus vertical as, as if there are two very separate things. I would like to try and argue that the main issue here is, is integration and customization. Um, it, it's very hard to cobble a vertical uh, solution if you're using non-integrated uh, you know, silo um, components. Uh, and if they're not easily customized. But essentially what, what a vertical solution is, is an integrated platform, which if it could all be customized, essentially a horizontal player can create vertical solutions. What, what do you think about this statement? Um, I think there are two ways to verticalize. Uh, the first one is, uh, like we do currently is by adding new features that communicate together, but there is also a different solution probably uh, that is to connect different horizontal solutions and so that uh, horizontal services actually to build uh, a real solution uh, and it will probably happen uh, in the near future when all services will have open APIs and uh, services will communicate together and maybe there won't be any uh, with with some local businesses, there won't be any need for uh, all-in-one solutions because all the existing tools will communicate together and that will work 
this way. Um, it's just a matter, I think, of maturity and time to happen. Um, can you guys hear me on this one? Um, so, I mean, both Google and Facebook are big horizontals, but they then create special user experiences, both for the consumer, but also for the advertisers. Um, we're running out of time. Yeah, no, so quickly, obviously, we're, we're a horizontal player because we have all this great content, but we, we, we're building vertical solutions that try to suit uh, a, where our audience is most interested, but B, where we can obviously commercially uh, get the right output. So it's balancing those two. We won't stop writing content in verticals that we think we can't monetize, because people come to us for more than just going to buy something or visiting a restaurant. We clearly have broad content. So we have to continue to straddle that. What we need to do is have better data so we can serve better content against what people are looking for, whether they're in vertical or at the top of the funnel, you know, looking at broader content. Quick comment. Yeah, I think uh, quickly both of those players are struggling tremendously with uh, with vertical. Um, go look at search results on Google for any local search, and you'll see a lot of directories. So how well is Google doing at local search? Very poorly. Otherwise, those directories would not have any existence. Um, Facebook also just told us that their approach to solving the SMB problem is to focus on big customers. So. It's a challenge, and, and there's a reason. They prove, it, they prove it at the biggest customer, and they percolate down, and hopefully they should have success, but it's going to take a long time. Can we, can we do one more question? Yeah, question. Just on the self-service uh, question, um, how come it, every 12-year-old on the planet can master their mobile phone and any number of complicated apps and games and then somehow, when they get to 22 and get to a business, they, they, they somehow can't manage to understand their products. I think we're doing something wrong. Well, that's more common on the state of education than work life systems in the country rather than, uh, than, than technology. I think people have embedded, um, embedded understanding and legacy understanding of things, and then they find it hard to learn new things. So, you know, you can't train a 40 year old business owner to suddenly be amazing at technology. I was self-service if they're just not interested in technology. So I guess it's hard, and that's why what I've tried to do with premium profiles is I've built a dashboard that's fairly simple to allow people to easily see. Uh, I've got editable cover prices in there which let people see you know, how much interaction they had with their ads with us, and then you can edit your cover price and see the revenue that you're earning based on some assumptions. So you can log in at any time of the day and just see where you think you are revenue versus spend. And so for me, that's simplicity. I worked with Google where it became, you know, I joined Google when AdWords was just being released and I left and it was unrecognizable in terms of the complexity of the system. So, you know, it's good for some things like media agencies and scale, but for small businesses, I think they need simplicity uh, in order to understand where they are with the media that they're spending. Any other questions? Um, I had just one to kind of wrap up on. So um, I think, Paul, you get, we're talking about the picture with the, uh, the flyers. Um, so what do you think? Do you think small businesses still need to be doing offline stuff as well as their online stuff and combining the two? Well, yeah. we have a magazine that goes out to 1.8 million people every month, so I guess I'd say yes. <laughs> but we went free, so we recognized, obviously, that we pioneered the freemium model four years ago and we, in New York last year as well. So um, funny enough, you know, print actually has an, an offline has a place, we know that. There's some titles that people are reading even more of, right? Um, so people have learned to cut through that and I think we'll, it, uh, you know, I still, I still believe it's about context, right? So you do different things at different times and so you need to be out there for people to choose, pick and choose when they want to interact with you. If you just go for a channel, then they can't find you. If, if you're not using Facebook, then you're not gonna see all the great things that Facebook says they can do for you. Yeah, so which is great for us, right? So, and, and we have an international audience, and so, but they're different, right? So people coming from New York to London are different from people trying to get down on the weekend and see a, see a show in the West End. So we've got to balance that um, and try to give people an opportunity to interact with us on all channels. That's a whole other panel, the, the, the trend for on-demand services who are doing a lot of print advertising, but I think I'm going to have to wrap up now. Thank you, panelists. Thank you.